So I was reading through this fantastic article by Paul Ramsey on the Crunchy Data blog. And in this article, Paul walks us through fuzzy name matching in Postgres. There are several different ways to do fuzzy name matching in Postgres, and there are also ways to optimize the indices that are used. And Paul walks through all of this in this article. It's super informative, so if you're interested in that, I'd recommend checking it out on the Crunchy Data blog. What I wanted to do here in this video was um, set myself up for being able to rerun some of the experiments in this article. And in order to do that, I need some fake name data. And Paul uses the fake name generator, and I went to check that out. And there's a bulk kind of export thing, and there's a bunch of options you have to choose, and um, you can pick all the data you want to include, and then it'll export it. And it's saying it's going to take nine minutes. Um, this is probably fine, but I was sort of looking at this and like, there's a gem in Ruby for generating fake data. I can do this locally. I can have a little more control over what I generate and I don't have to wait nine minutes for it. I'll be it, I have to write a little bit of code first, but um, kind of like the, the trade-off of having the control and being able to exercise some of that code locally. So let's take a look at Faker. Uh, this is a Ruby gem. It's pretty popular for yeah, generating fake data. I've seen it used in testing contexts a lot. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use it to create a huge CSV of data that we can load into a database to play around with. So yeah, let's jump to usage. Once we install Faker, then we can require it. We can use the different modules to get a name, to get an email. There's all sorts of things. We'll dig into it a little bit with uh, Pry. So let's jump over here. I'm going to make a new directory called fake data. And I'm going to jump into that directory. And let's see what Ruby version we got going. Um, let's use, I think I've got three installed here. So let's say at the local Ruby. Oh, oh. Cool. And then I'm going to gem install faker. Okay. And so if I open up pry now, can I require faker? Yes. And so now I can do things like faker name dot name, and I get a name. I can use prize ls to see what things are available on the name module. Got last name, initials, all sorts of things, prefix, suffix. So um, yeah, I guess I could see myself using like, like a combination of first name, last name sort of a thing. So like this. First name, uh, Faker name, last name. Yeah, you can keep running that, and you get a bunch of different things. It's uh, yeah, it's doing this. Th it's doing it randomly. So yeah, um, and then I probably want some other data. So there's like. Faker, internet, uh, email. I think, you know, there's some other ones. I could say ls and see that I've got like free email. I've got safe email, which I guess is, yeah, and an example domain um, username. Yeah, all sorts of things. Um, hmm. So, yeah, how do we want to do this? I guess I guess 
got that, that. Um, so we'll add faker internet email and then faker internet username. So that's looking good. And then I, oh, let's see, I guess faker also has like address things. Yes. Can do faker address and then, oh, let's see, city. State. It looks like those are maybe just US states, which is fine. And then where we have postcode. Yeah, it's the same as zip, I guess. Oh, zips include kind of a additional specifier there. So maybe postcode is what I want. Just think it'd be nice to include some address like data in here as well. So I'll say Baker address city, Baker address state. Faker address postcode. Jordan Mills, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is something to work with. I'm gonna copy this then, and I'm gonna take us now over to just a file. I'm going to say fake data underscore rb and here we can require faker we can add this line and i think inside of there we're just going to have to split open a file mm. data.csp we're going to write the file And we get a file descriptor. And with that file descriptor, we can puts data to it. So we're gonna puts and then the this whole line. And so that'll be that, and then it'll end. And I guess that'll just add one line. Let, let's make sure that works first. So if I say Ruby fake data, we get this fake data CSV. And if I cat that out, oops. Yeah, we just get the one line here. Winterton, Nebraska. All right, so let's split open the Ruby file again. Whoops, that just run it again. Well, I guess I'm curious, does that append to it or does that overwrite it? Okay, it just overwrites it, cool. So, Let's open the Ruby file again. And we want to, I think similar to this article, generate like 50,000 things. So we'll go with that. So I'm going to say 50,000 times do. And it's just gonna write to that file 50,000 times. and. I think put should include a new line at the end of each line. So I think we'll have a bunch of what well, 50,000 lines in the file as well, instead of one big mess on the first line. So next out of there, and I'm going to, what do we have here, uh, time. Yeah, so we can see how long this takes. We'll say time, Ruby, fake data dot Ruby. I'm just going to lean back and cross my arms and see how long this takes. Ooh, it is taking a second. I kind of expected that though, when I was doing just the individual 
runs of you know generating a a first name last name that sort of thing you know took a you know it was like a noticeable delay in hitting enter and having it appear you know so probably 100 200 uh, milliseconds so to do what seven or eight of these 50,000 times yeah that'll take a second Should we guess? Should we see how close I was? So I said 50,000. Yeah, 50,000. Then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times seven times what? Two, 200 milliseconds. That's 70,000. So I'll divide that by uh, what? 60. Oh, goodness, that's saying, could that be right? Fifty thousand times seven times point two. Okay, so whatever I had guessed here was not right. It took, what, 70, let's see, what, two minutes about? Okay, so if I say bat fake data CSV, there we go, Got a bunch of data. Oh, I'm trying to jump to the end here, and I do not think, oh, I was able to handle it. Okay. So we got a bunch of data in this CSV now. That's cool. That was just, uh, that was just a couple lines here. We worked out which pieces of faker data we wanted. We concatenated all together in a string, comma separated. Suppose I could... Honestly, this might be a little more readable. Yeah, let's move this up here. And then oh boy, I'm gonna get rid of these. And then I'm gonna get rid of these as well. Now we got just a list. So I can say um, fake person is this whole thing join like that. And I can just format it a little more nicely. Filed up puts fake person. Yeah, I find that a little more readable. So that's kind of my end result. It's not five lines anymore. It's, you know, 15 or so. Um, but that's definitely more readable. Cool. So that's a way of using Faker to generate a ton of fake data, turn it into a CSV. And uh, the next thing to do with it would be to load it up into a Postgres table using the copy command. Um, I'm not gonna cover, cover that in this video, probably cover it in the next one. Um, probably actually link it right just on the other end of this here in the show notes down below. So uh, keep an eye out for that and thanks for watching.